The more I learn about wine, the more I realize how I know nothing. It's truly endless. <laughs> truly, truly endless. Wow. This is also why I hate like snobs. Mm. Especially people I know, like I know nothing. But you know a fraction of what I know. <laughs> like for example, there are like master sommeliers who literally dedicated their entire yeah. lives to wine. And then there's always those like 23 year old students who are like, um, actually, and everyone looks at them like, bro. Sink gin, which is a brandy based gin. That sounds great. There's brandy based gin? That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're cool. They're from upstate New York. They make it out of it's an mm -hmm. apple brandy. They make okay. an eau de vie. They make an actual apple brandy. They make a whiskey now. And then they've been making a gin that they've held on to for a long time. Oh, sure. So wow. is it like brandy with juniper in the apple brandy? Yeah, so they, they literally distill, you know, they mm -hmm. press the apples, yeah. then they distill that, and so they get their eau de vie. They probably, I think, on their third run, then they do it again, like London Dry mm -hmm. style, where they put all the botanicals That's in. That's so it. cool. Wait, oh. what's the producer, the name again? Never I love like New yeah, York yeah. local oh. stuff. It's so cool. Wow. Very briny. I like it a little wow. less dirty, but that's okay. Damn. Whew. Should we try some of the? Yeah. Tequila? Let's try the the lighter one. I'll that one first. Okay. Ooh. I hope it's as good as they say. Ooh. If it's too strong, we'll <laughs> dilute it. Uh, my bartender friend, it's her favorite thing to drink. She's like, tequila on the rocks. Wow. Yeah, I like that. Ooh. That's um, nice. I could drink this. I know, one. I was about to say, I could drink that. Yum. Well, good. how was your day? Uh, how was like your first day? Uh, Very eventful. Well, what time did you have to get, what time did you start? at work and stuff. So uh, today was orientation. So mm. um, they made everyone, like front of house and back of house, come at 10 a.m. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, it literally felt like first day of college. Because like we all go in there, and then they have like a table with binders and names. And oh, they have, like those name tags Wait, that you so put organized. on. they're so organized. What yeah, the heck? Yeah, it was crazy. They like write your name down, or like put it on. <laughs> they give you like a little welcome booklet. You all file in, like, you so give the whole cute. spiel. Um, space looks awesome. Um, really excited. Yeah. So, Who do you think you'll be like working the closely, most closely with? With the SOM team. Okay. Yeah, How big is the SOM um, team? There's three SOMs and then a oh, beverage yes. manager. Right, right, right. And then a beverage director. Um, so yeah, I don't know how the sections are going to be divided, if at all. So, wow. But, yeah. Oh my god, I can't wait to come try it. And so you didn't really get to see the menu today or anything like that? I took a peek, yeah. They, okay. in the giant binder they gave us, it has like very detailed, like two to minute, like these are the standards. Within X number of minutes, the guest has to have this, 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 this. Whoa. And then oh my there's gosh. like different options for each kind of guest. It's like pretty crazy. Oh my god, wait, your life is totally different now. So different. I took my sommelier exam yesterday and I am so happy to report that I passed the exam. Only about 50% of the people who took the exam passed, but my cohort and I all went out for drinks and my friends joined also. I put on my certified sommelier pin. And then I invited my close friends over for a very long overdue housewarming and more celebration drinks. The past couple months was a blur and this entire summer was just dedicated to wines and studying. And I was so nervous during the exam that I feel like I didn't do as well as I would have liked to. But at the end of the day, I passed and I'm really excited for this next chapter as a sommelier in New York City. That's why I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, I just want to sleep. Yeah. That's why I get so salty when people are like, yeah. You just have rich parents. <laughs> like people are so mean on the I internet. Think, like, seriously, <laughs> how people just make these assumptions and then like sometimes I make assumptions, but then I keep it in my head. Like yeah. I never 
feel the desire to like chew somebody out online. Like, like we always say, like who hurt you? What the hell is going yeah. on? The number of times I like reply to these kinds of comments, like those people who are like, oh, you just have rich parents, like you're just so spoiled. I'm like, you try having three jobs and no yeah. sleep, and then I delete it. <laughs> Do you go through all the messages? I the normally time? do, because a lot of them are nice. So I'm just like, oh, thank you. Yeah, like, like a mood booster. Yeah. Uh, but some of them are you're like, just nasty. Very nasty. Do you notice if there's like a trend of like type of people who like say these thing, kinds of things, or like it's just like random? Anonymous people. Like they're private accounts. Oh, oh my god, cowards. I hate that. <sighs> Man, or like the people who are know-it-alls and like try to correct you on things too. Actually, like shut up. <laughs> this is why I hate people. Do you think you're still gonna have like time to be doing all this while you're like doing all your song stuff? I think so. Hopefully, yeah. right? Because that'll be so time. fun. I feel like your viewers will be so excited to see. The life of a psalm now, not just like someone studying to be a psalm. Now the actual life of someone yeah. in New York. Yeah. Like, I'm so invested in your journey now. Really? Like, oh, thank you. Wait, that's so cute. Yeah. Do you think going through the chorus and going through the entire psalm thing, it's changed your perspective on wine in any way? Mm, not perspective per se, but more like. It's like crack. <laughs> Before I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, I really like yeah. it. And then it's just like wow. addictive. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what about it is addictive? Like, what can't you get enough of? Everything in terms wow. of. Wait, that's incredible. I think this is like what book and music is for you in terms of. It is. Wine, for me, and how I understand it, is so closely related to like human history, human relationships, uh, politics, personal life, like macro and micro everything. Like, you know, wine has been here for thousands of years, right? And it's, um, wine is also fashion, right? So like, wine has trends, wine has like all these ups and downs. Like, 30 years ago, Merlot was freaking popular, like way back in like the British Empire days, like there was sweet wines, like that was like the fashion, right? And it's like, what is the fashion ones? now? What Natties, natural wines. Oh, yeah, all yeah, 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 for sure. Which is yeah, yeah, yeah. like not just about the hipster cool things, but it's really closely tied to the human values. In what Sustainability, way? natural, yeah. good for the body. Wow. And there's politics involved in wine. It's their law, it's insane. That's crazy. It's insane. Did you have to learn about the politics of it when you were studying? Like yeah, that laws and yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so, like, I've always been super jealous and envious of people who are able to get so deep in a topic mm. because it feels like, I don't know, there's when you know so much about something, it's like so exciting because like you almost feel like the cool person who just really is very knowledgeable about, about something and you can kind of share that excitement with other people. And for the most part, when I see people so excited, it makes me curious about what about this certain aspect of a topic makes you so excited about it. And there's so many different facets to it. And I think, yeah, like you said, like with the reading, with the writing, I'm starting to like get that spark of almost, it's not like obsessive, maybe it is teetering on obsessive. Singing in the dead 
that shit, yeah. But it's kind of fun at the same time because you just want to know more. There's like That's good. Almost endless. Mm. And it's fun that it's endless. Yeah. 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 It's like you want to dig deeper. Yeah. And broader. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is there any aspect about wine or whatever that you still feel like you don't know enough about and that you want to learn Everything. more about? I, um, the more I learn about wine, the more I realize how I know nothing. It's truly endless. <laughs> truly, truly endless. Wow. This is also why I hate like snobs. Mm. Especially people I know, like, I know nothing. But you know a fraction of what I know. <laughs> but you still act I like know nothing, you know. so that means like, why are you, why are you acting like you know shit, right? Mm. And um, like, for example, they're like, master sommeliers who literally dedicated their entire lives yeah. to wine and even they when they were giving lectures or like talking to us even they're like every day I learn something new and this wow. is why I love wine this is why I stayed in this industry for like 30 35 40 That's years crazy. and it's amazing and they're so freaking humble and then there's always those like 23 year old students they're like I'm actually and everyone looks at them like like bro why? like why why it's like Someone who's taking a wine elective, talking back to someone with a PhD or something. Mm. It, it's just, ah. but yeah. Mm. So no, I, I, I know nothing. I absolutely wow. know nothing. I even considered at one point, like maybe I should do an MFA or something. Like I would love to go to grad school and Study literature all day. Why not? <laughs> would you do that like night class? I would. Yeah. Because I think the biggest thing I miss is being able to really talk about these things. Like I have book clubs with um, with friends, but half the time we just end up talking about life and we end up right. talking about our lives and we end up just like chatting and as though we're just like grabbing dinner. But I actually just want to talk about whatever is going on in the novel or the book or the story or whatever. Um, but it's just like, what would I do with it? I would, it probably, it sounds very stressful going back to school. Like, I don't know if I could do it again. But yeah, I think I mentioned to you before, like the music and the writing and the everything is kind of like synergistic right now. Do you feel that way with the stuff that you're doing, where everything is like kind of synergy, synergizing? <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I don't think so. Just because they're very hard to mesh. Like, really? Uh, but like with the videos that you're able to like craft, and then you can talk and teach so much about something that you care about so much, and it's also like a skill that. Is pretty unique to you where you are so, like I've heard from everybody who's also into, who's got like photography and like videography under their belt, that you're just like so fast and so I efficient am, and like so good at it. I did it for seven years, <laughs> I should be fast. I made a living off of it right. before I switched, yeah. But it's almost perfect that you fit into this like niche that you're finding yourself in with TikTok and like all this stuff. I guess in that sense, yeah. Like I think maybe like our expectations or like our goals are too high, but it just feels like there are all these like little things that are almost unrelated, if mm. that makes sense. Cause, like, because now that I've switched from art direction to like song, like I'm not gonna work from home ever yeah. anymore. I'm gonna be on the floor. I have to be physically there. It's like, and I have to be so focused, especially because it's fine dining, yeah. that like I won't have time to like conceptualize anything or create new ideas. And when I get home, I'm gonna be standing for eight hours. I'm gonna be like, you're gonna, be so gonna die. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah. So, like so far, yes, but I don't know. What are you trying? Oh, okay. It's just a try. See, that's too Is that nice. the dark one? Yeah. This is that the one, one was like... fire. I felt <laughs> like I took a sip and I was breathing out fire. Is it better with water? Sorry, I'm not trying to be too extra, but... <laughs> Do you like ice? 
You want ice? Okay. I'm just gonna discard the ice. Go for it. Just straight. I don't like diluted diluted. <laughs> Yay. Was that just to cool it down? Uh, and dilute it like a tiny bit, because we're both like... <laughs> <laughs> this is so much alcohol. <laughs> of course. Dude, the it. green card process has been <laughs> such... Wait, how's that going? I'm just waiting now. Like, they've approved everything for me, um, but I just have to wait for the actual documentation to come through, and I think How long that does that take? ...is the longest. Like, that is like a crapshoot. It could take a year. It could take 10 years. Um, but I'm hoping because of South Africa, like because I use my South African passport to do it, it'll give me somewhat of an edge because mm. not that many South Africans are trying to like live in the US for the most part. Um, but who knows? Uh, yeah, like I don't think I will ever, I am waiting for the day where I can leave the US and feel fine knowing I can come back with ease yeah. and no stress whatsoever. It never ends, though. <laughs> unless you get the stupid citizenship. Are you going for it? Are I have you... to. When? I feel like, because, I mean, I guess I can extend the green card. Yeah. Uh, I have to. Wait, what do you mean? I thought green card was. You can renew it every 10 years. If you don't oh. renew it, you're. Goodbye. Wait, it immediately just, like, cuts out? I don't think it's immediately, you're... but, like, you. So, what's kinda... stopping you from just renewing it and then. Because, uh, like, I see why not at this point. Uh, you get more protection, honestly, as an American, yeah. um, no matter where you go in the world, right? Like, yeah. number one, yes, you get to vote, but like personal security-wise, like Korea is an awesome country to live in, also. But like, if you get in trouble overseas, Korea is not gonna try to like Hold bail you, you out and stuff, or, like <laughs> get you out of trouble or like really protect you. Right. American citizens are so freaking well protected. Um, you just go to U.S. embassy or like. They know that an American is in trouble. That's true. Go for you. Actually, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's so stressful being outside of the U.S., not having any protection, and then also not feeling safe enough to go to the U.S. embassy yeah. or anything. Yeah. yeah. And looking at yeah. when you get your green card, it's like until valid until whatever expired, whatever. Um, <laughs> as the years go by, you're like, all right. <laughs> Three years left. <laughs> I don't want that. I'm so done yeah. with that anxiety of being an alien in this country. This is why I get so angry, so angry, especially when I was, you know, yeah. before I got my green card and stuff. Like when those ignorant people are always like, "Oh, like the foreigners is just trying to take our jobs away from us." I'm like, "Fuck you!" Like, do you know yeah. how hard your country tries to protect literally all of your jobs? Right. <laughs> they make it so hard for us. It's like, how dare you? Like, I really don't think I've spoken to anybody who is an immigrant who has not had a hard time. Like, yeah. It is a struggle for every single person. But if you're a US citizen, you would never know. And like some of our friends who are just capable of being fun employed, like I love that for them. Like being fun employed sounds amazing. It sounds super fun, but I don't think I could ever be fun employed at this point. Like, like you. Until you get that green card, you're like tied to right. the job. Green card or like being ever becoming a citizen. Like the job gives you like the time. The minute you end your position somewhere, the clock starts ticking. Right. That moment, and there's no there's no leeway. You're just out. Yeah. Me. Good job. <laughs> Where is that one? Which one are you drinking? <laughs> what is that one? Is that the, the dark one? This is the light one. Do okay, the I'll try one? the I'll try the dark one with okay. the water. Water Cheers. down. Cheers. Yeah, maintaining like long-term friendships like the older we get, it's like tricky, really really yeah. tricky. But it's like now I don't really want to put in the effort. <laughs> I know, same. I'm tired. I don't have the energy. <laughs> Me too. Like having the same conversation over and over again with just different people, like you have to really blow it out of the water. Like I have to be fascinated by you <laughs> in order for me to actually want to like have to go through the spiel, my life spiel with you. 
Yeah, I'm yeah. tired too. I'm sick of seeing. <laughs> Where are you from? Where are you from? <laughs> what do you do? Where do you work? I think that's why yesterday when we were at the bar, I was like, I gotta go. I can't tell anybody else what line of work I do and where I work. I just can't do it anymore. I can't believe the first thing he asked you was like, so what do you do? That's and it was so the tone too. It wasn't like, Wait, what oh, tone? like I'm genuinely interested. Like, what do you do? Like, how long have you been doing? It was like sizing people up almost like, Oh, like, who are you? Like, you know, are you worth being in my presence? Oh my you gosh. Know? It's yeah. extra awful because it's like they already assume yeah. that you are, like, not doing anything major right. or cool exactly. or whatever they want. And if they, and if, like, the person who he's talking to somehow does, like, meet his expectations. He almost like mocks them and is like condescending in a way, like the way that he was with Lancey. And he was like, oh, so you work at NASA. You must work on building the arms of these like robots or whatever. Yeah, it's like, uh, like maybe wait, she builds the robot, not one like, little First of part. all, you don't know shit about robotics and you also don't know shit about NASA. So just don't. Like, <laughs> just don't even try. Going back to the entire theme of the year, maybe, of our lives. It's just like some men. I, <laughs> I think those kinds of men. But I think we're also just better at identifying narcissistic people. But yeah. do you ever get the sense that, like, sometimes people, especially the people that we know, um, who are so into tech and who are like, software engineers, like a big driver for the traveling is because like the work itself is not that fulfilling and so in order to make yourself feel more excited about life and like you feel like you're doing more is to like seek out things like travel and stuff. Not to say that travel is not just like baseline and incredible thing to do, but Sometimes I wonder if I found a job that I was truly just like so fundamentally ingrained, like mm. it like suited my values and everything that I loved. Would I still feel such a strong desire to? I be think you would. All the time? Yeah, because the curiosity to see the world would still be there. I feel. Yeah. And like that high you get, regardless of your you state do. of burnt outness or not, I think. Yeah, just overrides everything else. <laughs> I was on a subway the other day, and just, I think a group of 10 finance bros walked in, and the volume that they talk is absurd. Like, I don't know why anyone needs to speak that loudly, but they were almost all just like yelling at each other, <laughs> even though we we're all like in a very confined space. And I was just like, why? I don't get it. Repeat. I don't get you. Self-awareness. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like, listen to me, I exist. It, yeah. Hear my existence. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> You're annoying. <laughs> yeah. But I used to admire, like I thought that that type of person and that type of profession was so, was like the epitome of life at one point. Mm. Like I really thought that if someone had made it in that type of career, with that type of caliber or whatever, that was like something to be, that was the end goal almost. And I think the longer that I've lived in New York, the more I just don't care for these industries anymore, like tech, finance, I don't know, I just don't, feel like I learn anything from mm. these type of people anymore. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, it's a lot of them. Yeah. Meh. And we have a lot of friends who are in the industry too. Yeah, very few of whom we are close friends. Close friends, for sure. I think it's just hard, like especially the people who are really invested in the industries, it's hard to relate sometimes. Mm. Like, I think, I guess for every industry, 
attracts a certain kind right, of person. Right, a certain type of person, yeah. for sure. Mm. Yeah, that's why I don't know if I could stay in tech forever. I'm just like, 10 years from now, am I still gonna be a software engineer? Like, I don't even know. You could know. be touring. Good girl, Jane. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god. Wait, how's, how's, um, how's the music yeah. going? It's good. Um, wrapping up a track with the second producer person that I'm working with. Um, it's really interesting seeing how different producers have such different styles too. Um, like, I've only worked with two, but Eric versus Michael. Completely different. Yeah. Like the sound, their vibe is completely different. But I, I don't know why. Like I really just enjoyed the writing process for for them. Like I find it really hard to write music alone for some reason. Like if somebody gives me a chord progression, if somebody gives me just a loop that. I can just listen to over and over again. Slowly, melodies and ideas start to form. And normally, yeah, like it'll happen within an hour. Like, okay, like I have an idea down. I have a scene in my head and I'm drawing from my experiences, friends' experiences. Um, like I told you, I like, was so inspired by Audrey's yeah. experience where she just met that guy at the casino night thing. Yeah, and holy like, crap. <laughs> um, even though the, the romance didn't work out, it was still such a fun like anecdote to draw on, mm. to craft it into a story mm -hmm. almost. Um, yeah, like I really hope that I continue to do this music stuff because it feels, it feels very natural, and it's fun sharing it with people too. Yeah, just yeah. to see if it resonates with anybody, like that aspect is really fun. Mm. Is that the one that's coming out next? I think so. Yeah. It's, I was talking to Michael and he said that it's, the mixing part is 90% there. Mm -hmm. um, so, we'll see. It's hard doing it when he's remote. Like, he lives in LA. Um, so we occasionally will just hop on Zoom calls and just like brainstorm, brainstorm awesome. on stuff. Or he'll send me, he'll just eat. Most of our exchanges are just through email. Like, he's like, okay, here's something. And then I'm like, okay, here's something back. Like, it's just that back and forth, back and forth. And then slowly we've just pieced together this song or this project together. Um, so yeah, that's been interesting too, because it's also very different from Eric, where I'll just go over to his place once a week, and then we just work on stuff in person, live. Um, so yeah, like the different methods of working has been interesting too. I'm assuming yeah. you like the in person. Yeah, it definitely is more productive, I would say, yeah. and I also have no friendship or like actual like I don't know anything about Michael at all we only met through email and like texting and stuff so it's harder to like really be invested in something if I don't know this person at all like the only thing that's keeping us interacting is the music itself so yeah I would definitely rather it be in person yeah yeah would you say like the collaborative aspect of music is part of the fun? Yeah, because I think I've been trying, for a while I tried to do it by myself and there were just certain things that I feel like I was lacking. Like I, yes, I can do the vocals and yes, I have some music theory and I, I mean, I studied music for a while, but um, not having another person to bounce ideas off of or to collaborate with, it feels a little empty sometimes. Like, there's only so much I can do on my own. 
um, before it gets a little bit stale after mm. a while. Yeah. Um, that's why it's fun working with different people because each person has a very different perspective and each different person has a very different style and taste. Um, and I'm definitely, I would say, like a good molder. Like I'm good at taking what they give me and just kind of like fashioning it into a way that like fits it. Um, so I think I get to be like chameleon-esque in that way. I remember you used to write and you used to like... Kind of fell out a bit, but... What, like, what stopped and why did you stop? Good question, I don't know, I think. Because you definitely, yeah, like your writing is very unique. It's definitely kind of <laughs> very like, sassy. sarcastic, yeah. sassy, but it was funny. It was really yeah. funny. I don't know, I think around the time I dated my ex, or a little before that, probably stopped, slash when the, some friendships started. Mm. Yeah. I think when you're mentally not okay is when creativity either skyrockets or <laughs> or dies. <laughs> what is it normally for you? Is it up or down? <sighs> Unpredictable, but it's yeah. either or. It's never like creativity. Like it's mm. like one or the other. I think it died for that then. Right. And then, but then it turned me more into like photography. Yeah. I think I'm just such a visual person. Right. It's easier for me to express the moods and vibes like, visually than words. Because for you, words are like very like yeah. strong in terms of like a, being able to express how you feel and think. Yeah. Yeah, which is very powerful. I definitely do think I'm more of a words person than a visual person. Mm. Like I love the visuals and I wish I could craft it, but I just, it's so hard for me to piece it together. It just doesn't feel coherent mm. with the visuals. But with the words, yeah, I don't know. It flows mm. more. It makes more sense for you. It makes more yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, you have to start a TikTok. Ah. <laughs> Visuals doesn't have to be good. I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> stitch random shit, random videos, or literally start recording of you reading a book. Mm. Just leave it on. Okay, and then whenever you write something, whenever yeah. you feel like sharing it in terms of story, just yeah. stick that on there and <laughs> voice over it. Yeah. Because I really, really think it's a shame that not more people are getting to read or listen to these beautiful words that you write. Mm. And I really think, I know it's daunting and I know yeah. it's scary. <laughs> I promise you I was so scared too, but like, mm. you just, and you'll start to attract people who are really interested in what you have to say. Like, I have my niche, you're going to have your niche, I promise you, and I really think it's going to be worth it. They're going to encourage you wow. to do more. Yeah. I, like, give it a try. Give it two months of, like, you don't have to be consistent, super consistent. Mm -hmm. Just give it two months of whenever you do feel like it, posting it. Yeah. You know I'll be the biggest cheerleader. Like, just, <laughs> just try it. I really think it'll be... Awesome. Yeah, I think that was my the hardest thing though, like just finding the thing, my like niche, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I have been thinking about it, like what would I do? And I think I could do something with the writing. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I don't know what yet, maybe just like as poetry, <laughs> like Just whatever. start. Honestly, <laughs> Down the line, if you're not proud of it, you can archive it or delete yeah. it or whatever. Just, I, I really think TikTok's going somewhere, and I, I think it is wild. Yeah, like it's the, crazy. You'll just post some random shit, and somehow, through like random algorithms, like people just stumble across you yeah. for no reason whatsoever. It's crazy. Yeah, it's very, very bizarre. Like I don't know how it happened yeah. this way. Um, How amazing would it be that whatever you write or share, that's what you want to do, right? Like you're putting something that you care about, that you wanted to just like yeah, write about, that you and then someone actually, and people would literally be like, it could be three people, who cares? But it would be three people who are like, oh my god, I resonated with this so much. Yeah, that's amazing. 
It is a really special feeling when someone is like, I get you, or like, thank you, you feel, you like touched a part of me that I didn't really know how to express or something, especially with a stranger. Like with friends, yeah. there's probably like more incentive for them to be invested in what you're doing, but for a complete stranger to be invested in what you're doing, yeah. that's wild. Yeah. Oof. You should give it a try.